Hi everyone, Tanya Wills, midwife in New York City. Welcome to The Cancer Project. Today on The Cancer Project, I wanna show you all the ways that I cover my head. I just finished chemo about two weeks ago. I did four doses of AC and four doses of dense dose Taxol. So I was in chemo for about three and a half months and I did lose uh, all my hair. I do still have some hair. I, I realize that this is the first video that I'm doing for you guys where I'm just totally bald. I'm just like rocking the bald thing. And um, I don't typically spend my days uh, walking around like this, but I, I am used to it. My kids are used to it. But I would say most of the time I do keep my head covered primarily because I've been going through this during the winter. And I don't think I need to tell you that it's sort of like been a step-by-step -step process for me to really accept what was going to be happening to my body and losing my hair and all those sorts of things that come with chemo. So as it stands right now with me having completed chemo, I my head is shiny. I have like a really nice head, I think. Like it worked out pretty nice. I do have little teeny little, like if you touched it, you could feel little hairs like a like a buzz cut, especially around here and in the back. But like, I think you, you really can't see them if you just were to look at me. I'm just going to show you all the different ways that I have wound up um, covering my head. I didn't exactly know what was gonna happen in the beginning, so I thought I would try lots of different things, and this is sort of the way that it turned out. So the first thing uh, is just a little slouchy hat. Looks like this. I have it in three colors, and this was one of the first things that I got uh, to cover my head, because one of the things that I had heard is that your head is gonna feel really, really breezy, that the pillow was gonna be cold on my head at night, but one of the things that I discovered is that when I first shaved my head, the, the hair that was left there with my sort of buzz cut it kind of hurt. It felt like prickly porcupine things in my scalp. So uh, when I laid my head on the pillow, if I moved my head back and forth, it just felt very, very pokey. So I would wear this on my head. And um, I do still wear this at night. Here's what it looks like. So um, this is what I look like it, when I wake up in the morning, um, right before I go to bed at night. If you come to my house at like seven in the morning or a day when I slept in, then you would see me like this. I did go out to move the car like this today, although I don't usually spend the day in a hat like this. Um, I don't know why. I, I have fewer shits now than I have in the past, so I, I probably would, uh, but I just haven't. I've always been doing other things to cover my head. So this is one example of like a super practical way. You can see what the back looks like. Um, to just cover your head and keep it warm and it's just it's cotton it's very soft and I think it was like $12 for three of these um, so I'll try to put the link in the description and Amazon so you can find these in case you're going through cancer treatment here's the look so the next thing I wanted to show you guys is my wig. I don't think I've worn my wig for any Cancer Project videos. Uh, and quite honestly, I haven't worn my wig really at all. I mean, I wore it once, I'll tell you all about it, but I wanna show you what it looks like. When I got this wig, I honestly believed that I would wear it, and I do love this wig, and I think that it looks beautiful, but um, there are a lot of reasons that I don't wear it, and I'll talk to you about it. Those of you who have a theater background will know all about how to put on a wig, and uh, I do too, so I felt super comfortable uh, trying on wigs and those kinds of things. The first thing you put on is a wig cap. So this is the wig cap that they gave me uh, at the lovely salon where I got my wig and it's just, I think it's just like a fishnet stocking or something like that. So you put the wig cap on your head like this. Um, I'm not sure why I'm wearing a wig cap. There's no hair for me to kind of like keep under here, but this is what they told me to do. They said that it would help like protect me because my head is gonna sweat. And then over that, you put this, um, this, suede thing that helps prevent it from slipping. So this goes here like this. So this is sort of where you start out with the wig. This is my wig. <laughs> here it is. It's a little weird. I feel like it's somebody else's hair that's just sort of sitting there. Um, but just to kind of give you an idea about what I wound up doing, I, I did get a style that um, was very similar to the short haircut that I had. I decided that it would be uh, a more natural feeling for me to go with a style that was easy in that way. So this particular wig um, is synthetic hair. This is not real hair. You can get real hair, uh, but um, I decided not to do that and for short, uh, a short haired wig, synthetic hair works really, really nicely. Um, if it rains on this wig, it will stay like this. The style basically stays the same. You can't 
change it. This wig also has a lace front, which if you can see inside here, you can see right here, there's sort of like a clear spot here, and that's where the part of the hair is. So that's gonna help it look like it's really my scalp at the part, which is really, really nice. The first thing that um, I do when I'm putting on these wigs is just go to the back of the wig, and they have these little, um, these little straps that you can adjust to make the wig tighter or looser. And the first thing that I do is make it as loose as I possibly can because this thing freaking strangles my head, I'm gonna be totally honest with you. So I already did that, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put it on and show you what it looks like. Okay, can, so can you see the part? Do you see how, how the part looks? It looks like a scalp, do you see that? So that's like what the lace front does. And you can get longer wigs that have lace front all through the front. So that way, um, you know, if you wanna style it or anything like that, you can do that. This particular wig only has the lace front right here in the part. So if we look like underneath the bangs here, there's not a lace front, so it looks super wiggy there. But here, this particular style has the bangs that just kinda go go like that. If I was gonna wear this for real, I would probably spray it with a whole bunch of um, dry shampoo to make it look not quite so shiny because the shininess just kind of is the stuff that makes it look kind of wiggy. But totally, I feel like it looks pretty good, right? So here's the deal. So I wore this wig um, to teach uh, a lactation class for doulas that I teach online. And it was right in the beginning of my cancer journey where I wasn't feeling super comfortable. I didn't know what I was doing with the scarves. I was like, not everybody knew that I had cancer. It was just sort of like a little bit, uh, it was very new for me. So I said, okay, I'm gonna wear the wig because I don't even know these people. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do this. So I wore the wig and the class started at like six o'clock. And by about 7.15, I was like, oh my God. Like I was going cross-eyed, my eyes were watering, my head was really throbbing. I felt like I was really in like a bad mood teaching, like I was trying to like answer questions and things like that and I kind of felt like I couldn't move my face or like, I mean I even feel right now talking to you with this wig on, I feel like my energy level is just like going down. And so I felt really, really uncomfortable and I kept having to, we took like three or four bathroom breaks because I was like, oh my God, I started getting a headache. So this is what I did, so um, so I went and I was like, okay guys, like let's take a five minute bathroom break and I, I like left the camera and I I went like you know off off camera and took off my wig and then eventually what I did was I just took all this under stuff off because I felt like it was just like strangling me and ultimately what I did was I just put the wig on um, just like just like this, just straight on my head. So I, I ultimately just did this, and, and this is what got me to the end of the class. But even by the end of the class, I was like, I really need this to be over. Like this is really really hard. So when I wear the wig, which I actually do think looks looks pretty good, um, I um, I just I feel like I'm in a play. I don't know, and it just feels weird on my head, and I I just I feel like. Everybody knows I'm wearing a wig, even though I think the wig looks really great. But for me, I feel the most uncomfortable with hair. Isn't that the weirdest thing? It was not what I was expecting. So essentially, I wore this wig that one time and I have never worn it again. My oncologist wrote me a prescription for a cranial prosthesis. My insurance is gonna cover a pretty decent portion of this wig. This wig was about $600 um, and this was the cheapest wig that I tried on. That's not why I chose it. I tried on real hair wigs with long hair that went up to like $4,000 and they were totally beautiful, but the amount of maintenance to me just seemed like a pain in the ass. I mean, I thought about what a pain in the ass my own hair was and thinking like trying to figure it out on a wig just seemed like really, really hard for me. So um, this was really practical and I don't know, I mean, maybe I'll wear it to something someday. I have no idea, but um, I think I think probably I'm not gonna. It's a pain. The main way that I cover my head during the day is by wearing scarves tied around my head. And I have a whole bunch of them here in a pile for you to see, <laughs> to see uh, what I do with them. I don't think that I'm some kind of like headscarf tying expert. I don't even know that I would call this a tutorial as much as just, this is, I'm just sharing with you what I've been doing. And if you are just curious or you have cancer and you wanna see what people are doing, this is what I have been doing. When I first announced that I had cancer and I posted the first episode of The Cancer Project, uh, people started asking me, what do you need, what do you need, what do you need? What can I do for you, what can I do for you? I need headscarves and earrings and lipstick. And packages started coming to my house. <laughs> I did get some help from some friends, so I'll tell you all about what I learned. The first 
thing that I'm gonna show you. Um, I, this first scarf that I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna go ahead and use it with this, um, this suede like wig thing, which actually is very comfortable. And with some of the more slippery things, it helps to kind of keep things on my head. So I sort of put it over my ears. I always wear my scarves over my ears because otherwise you can kind of see that I, you know, I'm just kind of bald, right? So, um, so I like the way that this looks. And I think if you walk around town and you see people who are wearing headscarves for all different sorts of reasons, they do typically cover their, the tops of their ears. So you can see my earrings and it, it looks really nice. So I like the way that it looks. So this scarf, this first one I'm gonna show you is a long rectangular scarf. I have many of these scarves. This particular green one I wore yesterday um, and it's from my friend Bhakti who is in India and she sent me this from India. This is the way that I typically wear this scarf and there are many ways you can do this but this is what I have been doing and I learned the way to tie the scarf this way from my friend Adele. So what I do is I take the edge and I fold it over like this to make it a little bit thinner. I actually may do more than that when I put it on my head, but you'll see. And then um, I just put it with the folded part like this. I'm actually gonna do a little bit more than that to make it a little bit shorter. Okay, and I can, I can fix the hairline later. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these two spots, these two uh, ends, and I'm gonna tie them in a knot in the back. And here's what it looks like. Tie it one time, and then just kind of in a square knot. So tie it a second time. Okay, so lots of people, um, just gonna move it. Lots of people might just leave it like this and wear the scarf like this, maybe have a little bit more coverage in the back and it looks totally cute and it would be a really good way to wear it. Uh, but this is not typically the way that I wear my scarves. I usually keep them in more of the short hair style. So what I'm gonna do is take these pieces and I'm gonna tuck them in and back. So in the back, you see I have a little hole here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tuck that side in. And now tuck the side in and the whole thing is shoved in there really nicely and it should cover up my bald spot, which I think it does. And this is what it looks like. So in the front, it just kind of looks like this sort of slouchy beanie and in the back, it's got this cool bunchy thing going on. So uh, I really like it. I love the color of this. I wore it yesterday and it was really great. And um, and the, the little suede thing just sort of helps to keep it in place. So this is one uh, great, super simple option. Um, and what I love about it is that I would say when I first started doing this, I was a little bit worried that the back stuff was gonna fall out, but the hole back there is so small that once you shove everything in there, it just kind of stays. So uh, this is really practical and, and really great. One example, there's the look. Here's the back. Okay. Okay, the next scarf that I wanna show you is um, this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful gray thin scarf with flowers around it and fringe on the end that was given to me by Marcy Tardio, my uh, friend mentor. She's like a big sister to me and she's my midwife. She caught both my babies. Marcy came with me to chemo, I would say a couple of months ago. And um, I, uh, that day at chemo, I was actually wearing this slouchy hat, which I love. My sister-in-law, Melissa, um, crocheted or knitted this hat for me. I'm not sure how she made it. I'm kind of a dummy with these kinds of things. But if you know anything about me, you know that these are my favorite colors. And um, she made me a slouchy hat, which I, actually might even wear today because it feels like it might be nice. But um, I was wearing this, you can see what it looks like. It's so cute. Check it out. Look at the back. So adorable, right? Yes, yeah, so I love this hat and I wore it all winter and it's so soft and it's so beautiful. So I wore this to chemo that day, but Marcy was wearing this scarf around her neck. And I said, oh my gosh, Marcy, that scarf is so beautiful. And she said, it's from Paris. And I said, well, it looks gorgeous on you. And she took it off of her neck and she handed it to me and she said, put it on your head. I want to see what it looks like. So that's what I did. And then she let me keep it and I wear it a lot. So I'm gonna show you how I tie the scarf. So this is a square, this scarf. So for a big square like this, the first thing that I do is um, fold it in half and make it into a triangle. So we'll do that here. All 
hard to do in your lap. I usually do it on my bed. Okay, so it makes it into like a kerchief, right? And um, it doesn't have to be perfect for this scarf. I actually don't put anything under it. Um, I, it's a really, really simple tie, you guys. Anybody can do this. You can do this even if you have hair. It's so cute. Um, so I just put the little hairline wherever I want it, right? And then I take these parts in the back, the, the, the tails, right? And I'm going to tie them in the back over the point of the, of the scarf. So the point is going to be on my neck, and then I just tie over that. See? Like that. And then I just adjust it here. So it's kind of where I want it. And then for this scarf, it's so pretty with the flowers and everything. I just come up here and tie it in a knot like this. And then this one is so cute that I, I just leave it. Isn't it so pretty with the flowers and everything? And you know what? It smells like Marcy's perfume, so it reminds me of her. And after this is all over, I'm gonna give it back to her. But um, in the meantime, I always feel so gorgeous when I wear this scarf. So um, I, it's a really nice way to, this is, my kids and I, we call this my hair. So I love it when my hair looks like this. So um, that's another great example of one way to tie a square scarf. Pretty one, right? Okay, the next one that I want to show you um, is a silk scarf that I got from my dear friend Wendy Galix. And Wendy uh, came over, she's my friend from North Brunswick, so she came over um, right, I don't know, right after I shaved my head, I think, um, because she had a brain tumor a few years back and it was all benign, but she had to have brain surgery and um, they had to shave like part of her head for it. And she's a lawyer, so like everything she does is super duper professional. So she always covered it with a scarf. She got really, really good at all the scarves. This is the scarf that she brought me it's very I think it's silk it's very very um, slippery right um, and it's gorgeous you've probably seen me wear this in cancer project videos before um, so it looks like this it's a giant square and the difference with this one is that it's very very slippery so here's the way that I wear this scarf the first thing I do is tie it is fold it into a triangle to make kind of a kerchief out of it. Isn't it, isn't the color so great? Um, and then with this particular scarf, what I do is put it here over my hairline and then this part here, I fold back just to make it a little bit, a little bit shorter because it's a lot of scarf. And because this one, the, of the length of this one, there's kind of, there's a couple ways I can tie it, but here's the way that I typically wear it, um, which is, oh boy, it's slip, slipping and sliding already. Oh shit, I'm sh this is going well, guys. <laughs> okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tie it over the triangle in the back like I have before. Fix the front, this has to get pulled down here. Oh, there we go, now I'm in biz. Okay, good. This would be a perfectly good way to wear it, but what I usually do for this one is um, I tie it in a bow in the back because it's so pretty. See? And then sometimes I just pull some of this out a little bit so it makes it look like I've got hair back there. And that's what this one looks like. Cute, right? I love it. So thanks, Wendy. This is another way you can tie a scarf. It's a good way to like use like a slippery silk one that has good color in it. This is the way that I do it. Awesome. Okay, so the next style that I wanna show you is one that I sort of purchased on Amazon a while ago. Um, I don't know why I thought that I wouldn't like it. I thought that in the actual photos, they just kind of, they don't show a person wearing it or the people that they show wearing it in the photos don't look like they have cancer. So I just thought it wasn't a very good representation of what I might look like. But I wound up getting this and I, I actually love it and it's like one of my favorite things. So um, it actually comes in two parts. They actually marketed this, I think, as a sleep cap. I don't wear this to sleep. I wear this out. Um, it comes with this navy blue cap that the cap is actually made from bamboo. So it's so soft and it's so nice and I really love it. Um, it's got this like loopy thing on it that I think you're supposed to put the scarf through, but I never do that. I just do it my own way. I just put the, ca the cap on um, and I'll show you the other ways that I use this cap, but um, I use it with other sort of uh, handkerchiefs and things like that as well. But so I put the cap on and then it comes with this 
gorgeous, beautiful chiffon scarf that if you know me, you know a lot of my colors are in here. I love like orange and yellow and green and things like that. So here's the way that I um, tie this scarf. So I just put it right here and I kind of move it to the side a little bit and I tie it in a knot over to the side or just like a single knot, right? And then I just bring this part all the way around so it comes back here and then I tie it in a bow on the side right here. That's what it looks like. Isn't it so pretty? I wear it all the time. I'm, I actually find myself that I need to like change it up sometimes because I'm wearing it so much, but I love it. And keeping my ears covered and keeping everything covered and looking beautiful is like really, really easy with this. So it's super practical. I don't have to like unfold the whole thing. And I really, really love it. So I'll put the link for this one um, in the description in case you're interested in where I found this. And they have it in a whole bunch of different colors so you can pick what you like. Okay, for this next one, um, this is a, a basically a kerchief that my friend Siobhan Duggan sent me. Um, she's an artist, an art teacher, and she lives in Delaware in Rehoboth Beach. You can look her up if you want to learn about her art. Um, but she sent me this beautiful, like, I don't know, embroidered kerchief essentially, right? You can see how beautiful the the embroidery is on it. It's so, so lovely. And I just got this from her and I absolutely love it and I think it's going to be awesome especially in summertime uh, but I did start wearing it quite a bit so I also wear this same navy blue bamboo cap underneath uh, when I tie this one and I'll show you how I tie it um, so I just cover my ears with that and then this one I do a little bit differently than the others I actually do it the opposite so um, so the straight part I put in the, the back of my head so that the pointy part is in the front and then I just tie it up and around like this. And then, you know, depending on how the little things are hanging, I might leave them or I might just tuck them in. I can just tuck one in over here. This is like a really easy way for me to do my hair. Look at that, it's like done and it looks so cute. It's like finished. It's done and I feel really pretty and I just kind of pull this down around my ears and you can see my earrings and um, it's a really, really nice look. I have another scarf similar to this that's silk that I'm gonna show you next that I do a similar thing with, but I'll show you that next. So thanks Siobhan, I love this, this little kerchief. It's awesome, right? Check it out. Okay, I wanna show you two more things. The first thing is sort of related to this this cap, um, somebody, Deborah, actually sent me um, a different color than this, but I want to show you this. But this is another thing that I found on Amazon that is specifically geared towards people who are going through chemo. So it's like a black bamboo stretchy cap that has sort of the chiffon that's attached to it. And I have it in many different colors. I have one that's like more red, like the cap is red. I have one um, that's more peachy and a bunch of them. But anyway, here's, here's sort of how these things go. Um, so you just put it on your head like that, which is kind of cool. And it makes this, you can kind of cover your ears really easily and it's sort of wash and wear, which I really like. Um, and then what you do with these, these chiffon things, there's a few different ways you can do it. Um, here's one way that they say you can do it that I never do, but I'll show it to you anyway, which is um, you tie it in a knot and then make a bow. Right? So this is one way that you could wear it. Uh, I never wear it like this. I'm probably not gonna, although I think it looks really nice. It's just, I don't want all of this. I'm not, I don't want all this. It's not gonna happen. So what I usually do is just tie it there in the back. And then what I've been doing is two things. One thing is just sort of twisting it up here like this and then coming back around and then tying it back here. So I sort of get this like um, sort of turban look. Uh, it looks really nice with like hoop earrings and this kind of thing, which I, I really like. It's also really comfortable and really, really easy. And then the other way that I wear it, I'm just gonna undo it so you can see, is again, like I have the tie in the back and sometimes I just, I just kind of wrap it like this, so not as much black is showing 
and it's more the scarf, more the chiffon, and that's kind of what that winds up looking like, which is also, I think, really nice. Yeah, you can kind of see. So I'll put the link to this also. Uh, I also got these off of Amazon. They have many different colors and they're super practical. So um, they look cool, right? Yeah, pretty cool. So this scarf is a scarf that I got from my dear friend Sarah Lovell. And if you know me, it won't surprise you that I absolutely love this scarf and I wear it a ton. It's totally my colors. It's got little white polka dots on it. Um, and it is a, a big giant square. So the first thing that I do with a big giant square is fold it into a triangle, which I already did. And this is really big. So I'm gonna show you what I do with something big like this. Doesn't have to be perfect. So I put it on my head and I fold it back to make it a little bit shorter, right? And then I tie it in back over the point of the triangle like this, which lots of people would just leave it like this and that's perfectly fine. But what I do is tie it up here like this and I don't leave, I don't leave the little, these things out. I tuck them in like this. And then the back is, has this sort of long hair thing going on and sometimes I leave it like that. But a lot of times what I do is kind of poof this out a tiny bit and then tuck the rest under. So I'm kind of wearing a short, a short do. And then that's what it looks like. Isn't it cute? You can totally tell, I'm just lighting up right now just talking to you. I love this scarf. I think it looks really adorable. I love the color. I love the way that it looks. It feels really comfortable. It doesn't move on my head and um, it's really cute. So anyway, those are just like a few of the examples of um, all of the hairstyles that I've been wearing since I have no hair. I'm curious to see what's gonna be happening over the summer in the summer months with the sun and the heat and my hot flashes and uh, all those things that I'm going through. Um, and so I'll just keep you posted. Maybe I'll just be rocking it bald. I don't think anybody in New York City will give a shit if I'm, if I'm just going bald. But in any case, um, I would love to know what you think of this uh, or if you have any questions or anything, just put them in the comments below. If you like hearing my shit, um, you can please uh, like and subscribe and set yourself up from, for some alerts so that way you know when I have more Cancer Project videos coming out. Um, so until next time, see ya.